Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where local community members discuss a wide range of topics from serious to whimsical. Welcome to another edition of the Curry Cafe. The Curry Cafe, we have a weekly discussion here between uh, three, four of us, however many show up talking about various subjects that we find interesting and we hope you find interesting. And today's interesting discussion is going to be about radio. Since we're on a radio station, that seems appropriate. Um, I'll now turn the mic over to our other two participants as we go around the table and introduce myself. Yeah, introduce I? yourself. Okay, so hi. I knew you were supposed to do something. I, just, I, 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 I couldn't I'm, think of what it was you were supposed to do. <laughs> Now, Rick, yeah. I think when it comes to you, you're supposed to do the same thing. I'll try that. Okay. Okay, okay are we ready? Okay, yes. this is Shirley Hyatt, and I'm happy to be here today to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is the radio. Over to you, Rick. Okay. Rick McNamer, volunteer, and since I am here at the radio station, I should know something about radio, and I, I'll participate when I can. And by the way, our fearless leader, Ray Gary, was the first voice you heard. Oh, <laughs> oh I didn't say that? Okay. Um... Radio has been around a long time. It it was uh, started around the turn of the century, but it was not really very public. In fact, the first public radio broadcasts were around uh, 1920, Um, and there wasn't much to them. There were five licensed radio stations in the country, but by 1922, there were 500. And interestingly enough, they all tra- they all uh, transmitted on the same frequency. I, I don't know how that worked. I guess they were far enough away that it worked. Um, by uh, about 1923, there was uh, radios were pretty common in the house. More and more people had them, but they were large pieces of furniture that sat in the corner, and everybody sat around and listened to them and stared at them while they were doing whatever it is that they did. And they were good for listening to music and news and things like that. The interesting thing about, about music is that the the record companies didn't want radio stations playing their records initially because they thought it would hurt attendance at shows and, and hurt record sales. So it was a while before they realized that it was exactly the opposite, that having airtime increased the sales. And now they have people going around giving DJs money under the table to play music. Well, do you remember when people said, well, why is it called a wireless when there are so many wires? It's like, you know, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good question. You know, how come they call this the wireless? The radio, I remember listening to the radio as a kid, and it was just an event almost, you know. You listen to Superman or whatever. I was trying to remember the other day when I knew we were going to do this show. Who was it that said, don't touch that dial? Does anybody remember that? I think everybody Don't touch did. That didn't dial. They? Um, that and keep your cards and letters coming in, folks. Everybody <laughs> said that too, right? Yeah, something like that. But you know, in the Ken Burns did a, a wonderful show about early country music, and uh, and he was he was uh, showing little tidbits of how in the South, especially, people would come in very early in the morning and play live music, or they'd have a gospel early morning gospel show, or singers, or whatever. And um, so that's how a lot of those musicians got heard in the first place, because they weren't recorded. They were just live playing on the early morning radio shows. Or other shows. Woody Guthrie had a show that he did for a long time with somebody and uh, got in an argument over the types of songs he could play that he didn't want to play in so many political songs. And then uh, he also would just move on because the mood struck him. He was, he was a, pretty much a hobo a lot of the times, and then he'd get some kind of a good gig, a paying job where he could actually feed his family. And he said, I don't want to do this anymore, and he'd go hitchhike to another part of the country. That's getting off our subject of, of radio, though. Well, I, can, I can remember when I was a kid still living in Brooklyn, which would have been in the late 40s, my mother listening to uh, soap operas. Oh, yeah. Which then, unfortunately went on to be on television, too. I don't know. Well, of course, I was four years old, so I don't know how good those stories were. <laughs> but radio, for, for the longest time in the 20s, had these fictional programs like that that were done live, 
and uh, then they would play music. And interestingly enough, if you listen to um, the, the uh, what we now call old time radio, the 40s, uh, 30s, and 40s, they had big stars on these little half hour shows. Frank Absolutely. Sinatra did them, and and I think that would be something today that uh, no big star would touch a half hour radio show or anything like that. But well, I don't I don't know about that because I think radio is um, not declining. It's actually, believe it or not, kind of on the rise. More more and more people are recognizing the value of radio, and they still want to listen to the radio. And if I can just put some per personal experience in here, I think that listening to the radio is it, it attacks a different part of your brain, so to speak. Um, your imagination is stirred. If you're listening to an exciting Tom Mix show or Superman or, or one, of, one of those kids' shows that we all loved, um, you can just see everything that's happening, you know, and you don't have to see it on the screen. You, you're using your imagination. And I think radio and music, too, it just inspires a different place in you, and I think it's a valuable tool. You know, we get inundated in movies with sound and, and all kinds of noise going on, but if it's, if it's just radio that you're listening to, your mind is working on a different level. Am I making any sense? Yes. Well, yeah. Stan, Stan Freeberg did a bit years ago uh, talking about radio. The, he was defending radio as an advertising medium, and in that he... he Describes a situation where all these incredible things were happening. So, uh, mountains were falling. I don't know, but just things that are impossible that you could not put on film. You could do it now at CGI, but you couldn't do it at that time. And he said, see, it still works for advertising because you, like you said, you're picturing the Lone Ranger and Tonto riding after the bad guys. And he, he, maybe the downside of this, we believed every word of it, though. Yeah. When you were eight or ten years old, I can remember when Davy Crockett was on was on um, A Wonderful World at Disney. Well, you know, I had my coonskin cap and everything, and he was my hero, man. I'd sit in front of my little seven-inch television and be, just be <laughs> glued to it. And um, I, I was just heartbroken when somebody said, well, you know, that wasn't really him. He was really kind of a drunk, and he got thrown out of Congress and a whole bunch of bad things about it. I said, no, no. A lot of our early <laughs> <And> heroes. He, <laughs> he didn't look anything like uh, whoever it was that played him. And he didn't yeah. have this yeah, you and, find out those people that you've idolized. Yes. They're nothing like you pictured in your mind, but it doesn't matter in the end. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I have to uh, offer a little bit of an apology here by way of... Uh, of researching uh, this show, I, I dug out one of my favorite Queen songs because I just liked uh, uh, one of the sentences in the in the in the, well. I like the whole song, but this one sentence in in uh, in Radio Gaga, I kind of could kind of relate to. And the sentence is uh, "My only friend through teenage hours," and that was me. You know, I had that radio going all the time. But the reason I need to apologize is because then I stopped researching and just started playing all the Queen songs I could find. So <laughs> if we want to talk about some Queen songs later and why they were so good at Live Aid. Okay. Well, my first real foray as far into radio, I can't remember the exact age, but I remember getting a little Sears uh, 8 transistor silver tone radio and boy, walking around the neighborhood with that thing plastered to my ear and, yeah. and, and at night with you know, scrolling, or not scrolling, but uh, tuning in to different little shows. And the <laughs> the silly songs, I guess, but the ones that stick into my brain, I remember at that time that they would play over and over was um, Walter Brennan singing about a mule. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> which, which old, old Rivers. And old me. Rivers. It yeah. cheered me up as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, it still does. <laughs> yeah, right. The uh, Wolverton Mountain. Some guy sang about Wolverton Mountain. I, I can't remember the whole the whole uh, song. But And then I, I, my first crush was with um, Haley Mills, who was in The Parent Trap, and she did a song called Let's Get Together, Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. <laughs> Those songs just run through my brain all the time. I think about with the, that little eight transistor radio. I've always had a kind of a love, well, love affair is a little strong, but I think radio's still romantic to me. 
Oh, yeah. And and when tapes came out and, and you could walk around with a tape deck and, oh. and you could you could listen to the music that, that you purchased, that you could hear exactly what you wanted to hear. And and I think it's still it's still true now that people do listen to the radio and maybe they listen in a different way or on a different medium. But 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 radio is not going anywhere. I mean, think think of the rise in podcasting. I mean, all of the popular uh, personalities on television stations are doing podcasts. An, that's listening, folks. An, another, um, that's radio. You an, know. I'm sorry. Another line from that Queen song is, <laughs> you, "You've yet to have your finest hour." Oh, when the well. The song happen? is basically about, um, you know, radio's still out there. Some somebody still loves you, type of thing. And then at the end, he says, "You've yet to have your finest hour." So maybe, maybe you and, and it gave you hope, huh? You and Queen are right there. <laughs> I don't know. Well, well, the golden age, I guess, of radio, uh, from what I was research, 20s to 50s, I suppose. And I'm familiar, being a kid, again, watching TV with Abin Costello and the Jack Benny. Well, they all started in radio. Lucille right. Ball, um, a lot of people that I really wasn't aware of. But my golden age, for me, was around the early or mid 60s when the uh, the FM sta- uh, stations started to kind of take over without that screaming, yelling, AM sound effect stuff. I, it was fun for a while, but that was the underground counterculture type Somebody thing. Somebody speaking with a very sophisticated voice. Well, yeah. Almost. Now we will hear from. <laughs> <laughs> but but to, to emphasize that, there's a great old Saturday Night Live Saturday Night Live routine with Dan Aykroyd at a radio. He was a disc jockey at the a radio station, both AM and FM. And I don't know if you've ever seen that, but it just it put it out perfectly. Yeah. He did a real good job. If you, I would suggest if you check that out on YouTube, it's quite the funny maybe, little. Maybe or somebody who really knows what they're talking about can tell the difference between AM and FM. We are carried on an FM channel. So what what is the difference? When did FM come in as opposed to just AM? Because AM was hanging out there all by itself for I, a long time, wasn't it? I think it's been a long time. I'm trying time. to consider it long hair stuff. And uh, you know, like it didn't but come what's in. The, what's the difference? Well, it's the clearest channel is the only thing I know about it. Uh, and it was, you know, that's where you listen to classical music and stuff. I was and, then, and then there started to become FM rock stations and then. No, you didn't uh, get an FM radio in your, in, in your car unless you specifically ordered it, and very few people I knew had an FM radio. So when and now I'm, we're going the other way. AM is they're not putting AM in new cars. I'm trying anymore. to get to the point of um, when you change your dial from AM to FM, you're tuning into a different frequency. It's, is the it's... frequency of FM stronger, better, wider, narrower? I mean, what what is? I believe you know. If I hadn't gotten lost in Radio Gaga, I would have completed my my, my <laughs> research, and I could probably answer that question. But I'm sorry, you want to know anything about Radio Gaga? <laughs> well, sorry. from what I from what I researched, very little on that. But I thought it came around in the 30s, FM. But but it know. said overall just a clear signal. But I don't yeah. think it it went as far. I think AM oh, okay. would go. Further on, less. we're talking about radio waves now. Radio, right? Am I right in assuming that this is a a place that's called radio waves? I, I mean, there there's a lot going on in the. I think you've the, gone beyond the scope of this conversation. I think so. <laughs> my I think I maybe if Billy, <laughs> maybe if Billy had showed up this week, she could tell us. Maybe, about maybe we know. need an expert on this subject. So maybe we need. Did we get one on the phone? Maybe we <laughs> call somebody up. You know, <laughs> offer them free coffee and donuts. Maybe they'll come over and. I was just differentiating back then to the AM, FM, but, but mostly the rock stations, if you will, how, how they just had a whole different format that I enjoyed. It was uh, a lot less commercial. Few, fewer were, commercials. That's that's what I was that's, thinking. That's yeah. huge. I can't do any commercials these days. And no. thank you, KCIW, uh, for all of that. that but, um, but somebody was carrying the cost of those stations in a different way, so they were like, I think uh, contributors the, who paid for them rather and I think than musicians, advertisers, promoters uh, for concerts and stuff like that, because they were uh, in the '60s anyway, were from they, what I remember. But they were all advertising, weren't they? Well, it surely wasn't like the AM but, advertising that 
uh, that was going well, if you, on. If you listen to a Prairie Home Companion, and they have the what was the buttermilk biscuits or whatever, and uh, oh, that, and all those other uh, <laughs> and that and what a what a great show. Even though it was out of the golden era, it reflected, I think, on that golden era. That's what it era. was. It was yeah, it was it wasn't a, a parody, but it was the that was a phenomenon. I can yeah. I can remember. Uh, like in the uh, early 70s or late 70s, driving out west, where you got away, away from the New York radio stations. And there were shows exactly like that. Tom McNeil, is that Tom McNeil's Breakfast Hour? Mm. Morning Breakfast Clubbers, and then they would do all, and do the same things that uh, that Barry Coma Companion did, except they used to have the, the hog prices and stuff like that. Well, I really miss, I don't know why I stopped listening to these things. Maybe they're out of our scope or whatever, but Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me was a show that I used to listen to it's, on the radio. It's on here. Oh, Still I, on? You can yeah. find it. Oh, that's great. I, I'll have to find it. I it's love that. And great Fairy, Fairy Home Companion is, has changed so much that it isn't as interesting. But but some of those shows, I mean, they've been around forever. The, the car guys, I mean, good grief. Mm, oh, I'm not interested in cars, but I love their show. Yeah. Tom you know? and Ray. Bob think, and Ray. Oh, yeah. Right. That was that right. was another one. Yeah. No, no, I'm thinking the car guys, Tom and Ray... Magnozzi, or yeah. I can't think of that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I'm not a car guy either, but it was fun listening. And oh, I, they were they could were even learn something. clever. Yeah, and you could just picture these guys doing what they were doing. But Bob and Ray, that was a that was a, Bob a and different, Ray. right? Like Amy Wonderful. and Andy, you know, they're different personalities. Yeah, so, I always remember Bob and Ray doing their ridiculous shows, but one of them was the slow talker, and I remember <laughs> thinking, while, while this guy is going, I'm thinking, I can just see this guy getting so irritated. It's a slow talk. He talks about going, so, and, the, and the other guy's getting so irritated with him, you know, oh. come on, come on, come on, come on, speed it up. <laughs> you know? But th- those things, you can just picture these guys sitting together doing this and having such a great time, and it comes across on the radio, you don't have to see them. It's not TV. Right. You've still got them right there in your head. Right. Whether they look the same or not, but yeah, that's what yeah, I think. Great back fun. to that's but, what was great about Prairie Home Companion for me when I listened to it. Well, and also, what great music came out of that show? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, uh, fantastic eclectic music that that he would have on. And um, since we talked about it, I have to give the quote. I just love this uh, from Lake Wobegon when he he was. That's where it was supposedly the fictional town. All the women are strong. All the men are good looking, and all the children are above average. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Myth- mythical town. Yeah. Okay, getting back to my pre queen. Oh, 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 here we go. Research. Um, <laughs> the first radio was in in, uh, in the White House in 1927, uh, where uh, President Harding had that installed. Now. Uh, you can. What if you are a uh, a fan of uh, oh, Downton Abbey? You might remember the yeah the show where they were getting a radio installed in the Abbey because they wanted to hear the King's speech or something like that, and the the older people were gassed. We don't want one of those, and it required installation. It required crews to come in and put up antennas and things like that, and and. Uh, they see saw so no reason to have it there after the King's speech or whatever it was that they were supposed to listen yeah. to. It was, yeah, more of a big deal then to, to have a radio. Well, and think of all of the um, stories that are told around frequencies on the radio, whether we're talking about CB or, um, is that the right word, the, the right letter, CBs? The, the, for like I, truckers talking the truckers, back and forth? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so this is the way radio. That, that radio has been used, uh, ham radios and, and, you know, saved lives. People who have, have been in wartime situations where the radio was their only communication. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's played a major role in, in our lives since, as you say, about the 1920s. I was watching a Pearl Harbor show the other day, and it was about this plane that had crashed on an island away from the main islands, 100 miles from the main islands. And uh, a Japanese plane landed there, but that's not much of the story. But when they went there to, the Americans went there to find out about that plane, the people who lived there, who were, they they knew nothing about the the attack because they didn't have a radio. Mm. 
It's only 100 miles away. And they See, get your radio. Didn't really know what this Japanese guy was doing landing in their uh, property. But And another important little factoid, I guess, that I discovered I didn't know, um, when the Germans were bombing England, uh, at the time I wasn't aware that they had TV in England, some anyway, but the TV stations went out and then everybody had to depend on the BBC I don't, th- I don't think they had television. For, uh, 44? Well, that's 45. what I read. <laughs> I've also read that Hitler used TV as a propaganda tool, but you read a lot of things. Well, I know. Right, right. Well, I think we can all agree that from the beginning, radio has played a major role in a variety of, of ways in terms of news, getting information to people, um, saving lives, I'm sure, many, many times, and for sheer enjoyment and also for education. Um, but, you know, when I was a kid, we listened to hillbilly music on the radio, and we also listened to classical music. And so I feel, I feel like a large part of my early life was trained in, in that department. I mean, we would we kids, there are five of us kids, and we'd lie on the floor with the radio on and, you know, close our eyes and imagine what was going on. And, and it, was, it, was a, uh, it was a treat. It was like, oh, it's Saturday night. It's, oh, we're going to listen to, you know, what, Superman or Inner Sanctum. I think Inner Sanctum was one of those shows that we just couldn't wait. You know, it was going to scare us half the to death. The creaking you know? door. I yes. hated that creaking door. <laughs> See? See how <laughs> yeah, bad When it was on television, I hated it just as much. I was, I was, I was, I was really afraid of it. My parents had to calm me down. <laughs> and the famous or infamous. In, uh, yeah, and uh, here we are today going ahead with radio. So. Right. I was thinking of um, Orson Welles, and I think we oh, talked yeah. about it a little bit last uh, week. The most famous radio broadcast of all time. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Do you think people really did... Jump off there. No. Well, I believe Ray told us that no. That no, really according according to actual history, that uh, nobody died. Again, this was a, a pre pre Queen research. Uh, <laughs> a, a newspaper picked up on it and said uh, public panics and big headlines and things, and people followed that that newspaper, and that's how the story spread. When in fact, uh, nobody jumped out of a window. Nobody was afraid, and not a hell of a lot of people were even listening to it. Um, but I can remember my mother when I was a kid, when, when we'd heard about that, she said, oh yeah, there was, a, she still she believed it at that time. And she was a educated, sophisticated person living in Brooklyn. And you'd think she, she would know that it wasn't true. It wasn't. Well, but see, now you're talking about how we can use communication for propaganda. And basically what he did was produce a show that was so realistically presented that people thought it was and, really happening. So. And it was announced at the beginning, uh, uh-huh. that maybe when the actual show played, but uh, there wasn't an announcement at the beginning, now we're going to have Orson Welles doing da 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 yeah. and then some music if started to play. that part, then you're out of luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of propaganda, which we certainly have our fill of today on the radio, uh, oh, yeah. with uh, people just spewing nonsense and people believing it because they hear it on the radio, Way back when, there was a guy called Father Coughlin, who was a Catholic uh, priest who openly uh, preached anti-Semitism and was pro-Hitler and all that. And I don't know what the church thought of that, but he was on the radio all the time, and it, that spread a lot of bad information. What Father Coughlin, he was a Catholic priest, and he gave these fiery... Oh. Screaming things into the microphone, and he was a, uh, a proponent of Hitler and a fan. You say of Hitler? Yes. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, well you I... know, there are a lot of stations that still play and always probably will play a lot of of what Ray is just talking about here. People who are religiously uh, spewing whatever it is that that is their truth that they want the world to hear, and people succumb to it. They believe it. I don't. I don't know. I don't know why we believe some things and not others. That's a whole other, <laughs> probably a, a whole other uh, radio show we could talk about. But, you know, if you listen enough to somebody saying the same thing over and over and over again, your brain tends to want to accept it. And so it's, uh, 
it's a, it's a tool, and radio is certainly a tool for doing exactly that, getting out misinformation to people or information, or whichever it, way. But you know, it's, uh, Roosevelt had his fireside chats, which were very popular, yeah. right? And uh, of course, now we would have to have the uh, uh, mm-hmm. we'd have to have the other side of that, and people. He talked about how well things were going, or if they weren't going well, what you know, what the deal is. Pretty much told the truth, but yeah, I also now we would have somebody screaming that's fake news and he's a phone. Right, reading a little bit about those fireside chats, they sounded nice and warm and comfy and homey to me, of course, and I'm sure they were to a lot of people. But I also read where he he also did that because to counteract the conservative uh, newspapers of the time. <clears throat> so I wasn't aware that most newspapers back then were had maybe a conservative bent. I didn't know that. It, yeah. I know there were those, you know, all the uh, the yellow journalism from, what's his name? Hearst? Hearst, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that was to reassure people to say, hey, you know, I'm I'm sitting here, I'm in charge, and, and yeah. don't and anybody... And I'm eating it. well, and I'm safe, and... Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> but, but, you know, um, I think... To get into the political side of things, you know, when when you look at it and you say, well, what is that all about? Well, there's one guy at the helm, you know, the captain steering the ship, the uh, the president, the ruler, the dictator, whatever. And and so you need to know what's going on with this person. Um, And if they have that much power, if they have that much power and people say, yes, I agree that they have that much power then you're obligated to hear what they have to say because you believe they are, in fact, in charge. And the only way you're going to know is to listen to what they're talking about. And it's a, we're not in that same world anymore, sorry to say. Um, And now we could talk about free speech and how um, on the radio we're not allowed to say certain words. I don't know whether people pay much attention to that anymore. You can always bleep it out. But um, we're not quite as civil, maybe, as... As we once were. No, I, I would agree that. You know, I drove a, a truck for like 10 years, at the last 10 years working for the railroad, kind of all over the California, Nevada, Oregon, uh, Utah, anyway. And then, you know, I, I did have a radio in there and fishing through the dials trying to get out in the open country, especially with AM, and I couldn't get a lot of the FM. Boy, uh, conservative, conservative talk radio was the dominant form. I, I didn't find it's, anything else. It's, it's amazing, there. isn't it? You know, I mean, that was it, man. You know, and they speak uh, very authoritatively, like they... Uh, oh, yeah. And I'll do the same thing. I'm uh, halfway to Medford. I'll be punching buttons or pushing the seek thing, and it'll stop for a minute. Right. And in two sentences, I know, oh, this is conservative crap, and I can push the button again, because just the, the way they deliver things, and and find yourself screaming at the radio about, who is that... The, a woman on Fox who was uh, uh, just railing about marijuana being uh, made legal and all the all the babies that are winding up in the ER with overdoses. <laughs> I, I don't. I can think of Laura, Laura Ingram. And Laura maybe. Ingram. She's the one. Yeah, and you could tell you just get out there. Tone of her voice, what direction she was going to go in. Yeah. Do you yeah. think there is kind of a um, a sense of safety for people who are dedicated to getting their point of view across on the radio because you know you're like us, we're, we're sitting here in the cafe with our little little uh, recording devices going, having our coffee, and what are you having today? Are you having a sweet roll, Ray, or, or is that no. a no? 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 Oh, oh, sorry. I'm not supposed to tell. <laughs> but anyway, um, they want an audience, and they've got an audience, and I think I lost my train of thought there a little bit, but, but people who are dedicated to get a, their point of view across... I think radio is a great way to do that. If you if you are convinced, you can convince people. They can't see you, but they can hear you. And if you're really good at that, I can see how they could capture your imagination just in the same way that as kids, uh, we were captured by the idea that, that uh, Roy Rogers was uh, really out there on the trail, you know? I mean, it's all in what, how it affects us and why, maybe this is your question, Ray, why are, why are there so many of the, the, the people broadcasting who have a conservative point of view? Why, why aren't there more people with a so-called liberal bent 
on it's, the air. Do you think it's, it's still it's not, good? It's not as popular. It was uh, not Air, as popular? Air, Air America was on the air for I don't know how long. And when I first got satellite radio and I was traveling the country, you know, satellite radio is great. You just tune in those things. Right. And you can hear it from L.A. to Miami. But anyway, they had all con- uh, all um, liberal. Progressive con- radio. Yeah, progressive it radio. It was. And some of it was was garbage. It was like the same thing over and over again. But some of it was very good. Um, but it, it just didn't last. It went out of business. It wasn't as popular. And why that is, I have no well, idea. Well, I think. Probably because they didn't have the entertainment value of a Rush Limbaugh. Well, I was just going to say, I, I think it's in the delivery, and you just mentioned Rush, who's no longer with us, and that's a good thing, probably, for some of us. Um, but anyway, I, I do think there's a kind of energy behind it, and if you're angry enough, you can spout something that comes across to people. They, it's like they pick up on that. <laughs> they pick and, up on the intensity it, of it. And it has to be simplistic, to too. You have to be able to relate to what's being said. So it has to be a simplistic message. And don't don't you think that that of course at, the Jews at, are running the banks? Don't you know that? Oh, oh, right. I saw them the other day. As a matter of fact, no, I I think that it sparks something in our imagination. It's like we were curious. It's like really, did they did they just say that? Uh, maybe I better listen a little harder. Now wait a minute. I think the problem is when people stop questioning. And they decide to believe things that originally they would not have believed. And maybe it's the repetition that tips you over, so to speak, so that you suddenly start to think, yeah, maybe that does make sense after all. I don't know. How do we get to this place? You know, it's like hearing a song for the first time. You hear it on the radio and you go, gosh, that was nice. I'd like to hear that again. So you call up the DJ and you say, hey, could you play that song again? Remember the, remember the days when you could actually... Did it call in the, the DJ and say, hey, would you please call, uh, play that song again? Or you go out and you buy the CD because you want to hear it again. Um, it's something that piques our, our imagination, and then we pay closer attention to it. And at some point, you're either going to turn it off in disgust or you're going to go, yeah, that, yeah, I kind of I like that. You know, I think, maybe, I think maybe those people are right. So there's a lot of power. Absolute power with you, sitting behind a microphone and and talking to people. You've kind of come into my uh, arena where I first got interested in radio and listened to it uh, religiously. This was bec- before you were famous, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Other 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 people's uh, who were famous before me. <laughs> uh, Alan Freed coming from Cincinnati to New York was, uh, although I didn't know at the time that's what he had just done, but that was a major event. In my life and a lot of people's life, because he was Alan Freed. For those of you who don't know, was a uh, a disc jockey in Cincinnati, and he played. I, I don't remember what the type of music his show was about, but he played a lot of black music, a lot of uh, rhythm and blues, and things like that. And people started to like it, and uh, found out he had a white audience too. And then, uh, before long, he got a gig in in New York, WINS, and became just nationally famous, coined the words rock and roll, and the reason he changed it from rock and roll to rhythm and blues is it would uh, uh, just, I don't know, rhythm and blues was kind of like, um, well, it was the name for black music, basically, and uh, he was able to change that. And then he had shows and uh, just promoted the hell out of a lot of people, and basically was the beginning of rock and roll. Well, and then there were television shows about radio shows. Yeah. Remember that? WKRP. Yeah, WKRP. Mm-hmm. There was the, what was the? Lonnie the, Anderson. Remember Lonnie and You probably don't remember yeah, a lot. Yeah, of course okay. I do. Yeah, I know. That was reason yeah. enough for me to tune in. <laughs> <laughs> but there was another one, too. I think the Mary Tyler Moore show. No, 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 not Mary Tyler Moore. Or maybe it was. Didn't she was, work at a radio station? No, I thought it was TV television. Station. It was it a TV w, station? No, no, a WKRP. I'm going mm-hmm. back. No, that, yeah, it was a TV station. Well, at any rate, you but, know, ra- radio has been around a long time, and it's not going anywhere. You know, it's not, not stopping, should we say. Uh, people are finding more inventive ways to use radio because it is a powerful medium, and I'm, I'm happy about that. I like to get in my car and turn on the radio, right, you know? Right, So, and, 
getting back to Alan Freed, in, in those days, in the in the early fifties, they played. The radio stations did not play rock and roll on Sunday. Well, on that, Sunday, that, it was all Perry right. Como and and <laughs> and the like. And eventually, uh, even people like Alan Freed, who were who were pretty realistic in their taste of music, pretty good in their taste of music, were becoming a little bit more mainstream. So I would have to uh, stay up at night and try to get Skip. Radio Skip, if people know what that is. Oh yeah, uh, out of Harlem and listen to Jocko's Rocket Ship and people like that who who were still playing what I consider to be the real music, <laughs> uh, you know, gutsy stuff. I doubt yeah. he ever played a, a Frankie Avalon or a Brian Hyland song. But. Well, and that's another thing about my golden age. I call it my golden age when the uh, uh, the uh, what do I call it? The rock station started to uh, the iconoclastic, if you will. But they they played a lot of music that really wasn't popular, but bands that were just coming up. Uh, I have to have a shout out. There was a the three stations that I listened to mostly back in the, those days was KZ, KZAP out of Sacramento, uh, KSAN out of San Francisco, and one I could barely get, but when I did, it was my favorite, KFAT, KFAT out of Gilroy. Oh, KFAT. I you, remember KFAT. Oh, my gosh. They I was inter- listening to it the night they went out of business. Okay, I get chills even <laughs> talking about it because they introduced to me music, Asleep at the Wheel, oh, sure. Dan yeah. Hicks and his hot, and they would venture out into all kinds of stuff, but it was just a fun uh, radio station Yeah, and different, and along with KZAP and KSAN too, but boy, it didn't take long before corporate people and whatever greed, I don't know what you would call it, and then they... Uh, kind of took over in there and they start cutting songs out and more ads are thrown in. It's just unlistenable now, I think. Well, you know, when you brought up uh, KFAT, uh, I hadn't really paid any attention to it until some friends of mine kind of turned me on to it. And I was really listening to it the night they went off the air, I'll you know, and they had all the people that had been on, they were having a party and everybody was getting drunk, you know. Yeah. But but what I remember at that time in the, in the Bay Area, because I, I lived in Palo Alto for over 30 years, so, I, you know, I would listen to the stations around there. But the, the colleges, then the colleges that started broadcasting, like they had a, a three-hour bluegrass show at the um, San Mateo College. And so some of that was taken up in, in those ways. They weren't the regular, you know, like uh, I'm thinking... WNEW in New York, you know, that was what I listened to when I lived in New York. But the San Francisco stations, then, then, then the public, public radio kind of stepped in and, and took over some of these places. And so, you know, I think our little radio station, which is meant to be um, serving the community in which we live, it's, it's expanded itself so that people can listen at a wider range. But now you can listen to, to us on what? Just about anything, right? Because it's streaming. That's a whole other step in radio. Uh, anybody want to talk about that? Because that's kind of, well, kind of a, a new thing for me. I guess it is for me too. But I, 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 uh, up until a few months ago, I used to um, uh, make up thun, thumb drives or discs to send to uh, my friends of, of my radio show. And now I just tell them KCW.org. And you can look up the Moondog Show and listen to me anytime you want, even yep. if you're in Florida. My brother in Florida, and I have a isn't that something? Sister-in-law in Florida, and yeah, yeah. I've turned my family onto that too. It's yeah, the, you know, simply just go online, punch it up, and there we are. I think that's pretty cool. Well, I think what we're all saying is that that radio is an important thing, and we want to keep it going. And whether it's just people listening to to us in their car when they're driving around town or whether they want to go to other other means of finding us, sort of like a, a podcast. But, you know, thank God, somehow radio got started. So who who um who was it that that we honor as the the father of radio? Who who uh Well to me it's Alan Freed. No, 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 no. No, I'm no, no. talking, talking about, about I think Marconi was Marconi, oh, oh, who invented yeah, but there was actually, a couple of people before him I but think Marconi Mark, was the first one, I think, to he got broadcast the patent, a voice. I think, I think he had the patent. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. but Tesla was in there as well. Yeah, right. 
And that's what, like, 1900s? Yeah. I mean, early 1900s, Mm -hmm. late 1800s? So what they discovered was that they could somehow tap into, it's sort of like, I I don't know, it's a a miracle to me, but but (laughs) evidently... Evidently, there's stuff that. going on there in the air, and yeah. you can you can grab all of it. Do you ever think of the idea, though, that while you're walking around out there, there's all these radio waves yes. going around, and they're going through you and through I, you? I do think Coming that. from you and then going through me and... Yep. Uh, Picking up all kinds I of interest. And then, they, then we got the the uh, the planes spewing out chemistry, chem, chemicals <laughs> on us. And, <laughs> and Wait a minute. <laughs> You don't know show. about that? Oh, yeah. You don't listen to the radio <laughs> enough. <laughs> well, I, I think that, that we live in an age when so much is possible. We've got gazillions of choices. You know, if you watch a television show, they'll advertise telling you that you should listen to a podcast. You know, it's like, <laughs> I mean, seriously. So it, it's, it hasn't gone away. It's I, gotten I know, even stronger. Radio has done a lot to create, I guess, what we would call popular culture for sure. But they've also done a lot to promote and create popular culture crap. Um, You know, I mentioned some of the music uh, earlier that was just crap. And semi-crap kind of got in there and and, and, um, and, and fit in with it. But would would something like that, would, uh, oh, I don't know, a musician that we like, would they have become popular if they were just playing the juke joints and things like that? Um, and then would the, what I call the Frankie Avalon types, would they have gotten popular? Because, I mean, all of, they got popular because they were getting a lot of airplay and they were good looking in, in the movies, but I don't well, think they ever would have made it as singers. Ambition, too. You're talking about people who want to be popular, people who are willing to do whatever it takes. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you... If you were a struggling artist in the early days and you got a radio show, maybe you got 15 minutes. You know, mm-hmm. Maybe you didn't even get 15 minutes, but but maybe that was as far as you ever went. You know, why did why did people get on the radio originally and then? I guess I'm trying to I'm, uh, what I'm trying to get to is the, is the commercialization of of music and the radio today that. You know, you become a big star because they said you're a big star. Well, well, yeah, there you and, go. And I, I shouldn't cris- criticize them because I haven't really sat down and watched them, but, but there are a lot of performers out there that sound and look exactly the same to me. And well, they, the, 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 the more um, breasts they can expose has a lot to do with <laughs> it, or scandals she, they get into. Or that's well, a, I, I watched uh, a little bit of... Saturday Night Live when I got home last night, and they had a, a woman performer. I've, I have no idea what her name was. I have no idea who she is. I was astonished. I was really astonished at how awful she was. <laughs> I, mean, oh. <laughs> just, I mean, to my ear, to my ear. Sure. And, and people are raving and carrying on, and I thought, you know, I'm out of the loop of understanding contemporary music and the popularity of Contemporary music, it, it, and of course, that's probably why my my taste still hang on to, you know, my Stardust show, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But today's music is, uh, for the most part, for me, is un- unintelligible. I don't get it. You know, I I, I I I apologized to somebody the other day uh, as far as being involved in popular culture. I'm uh, going to be eighty next month, so I don't really know much about popular culture, and I'm not expected to. But the the other day I was in a restaurant and the waitress was wearing a hat and it said pink on the hat. And for years now I've been seeing all these girls walking around with sweatshirts and uh, sweatpants and whatever say pink on them. So it dawned on me to ask her now, is it is, is all these things with pink on it? Is that the singer? And no, it turns out that uh, that's a that's a particular type of. Uh, of garment from Victoria's Secret. Oh, the, I thought pink was an artist. That's well, it is well, too, yeah, really and a very good one. Yeah. Does, oh, okay. does not deserve to be on the butts oh, of oh, beauty's. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> see, that, that's how out so, I like So it. I, I, I told her, I said, now, you watch when you get to be old, you won't know anything about popular culture either. So, <laughs> and God help us, whatever it might be. Well, but it just seems like this gets thrust upon us as being 
the, the greatest or the new hit or the new that. And I, well, that's why we have so many choices, though. We don't, we're not limited to the old days when there was one radio station or two radio stations that you could actually get on your dial, and then things expanded. We have so many choices now. But if you think we're going to try to keep up with whatever the, the teenagers are, I mean, I've, I don't think I've ever heard Taylor Swift sing. I, d I have no idea neither, because neither I've I, chosen not to find out, I people. guess. But, but there are people who say, well, she doesn't have anything to say, but she's, she's talking to the teeny boppers. I mean, uh, what, is that, what does that mean? Teeny boppers is probably an ancient phrase at this point. But you're talking about culturally what is popular. It depends on who you're talking about. Are, are we living in a nation or in a world where only that age group matters? Only the music that uh, would appeal to the 20 If you're year selling Coca-Cola, yes. What? If you're selling Coca-Cola or uh, Victoria's Secret sweatpants. Well, but I'm just saying, when you say popular culture, is there an age group? Because I can't listen to that stuff. I, well, well, I, I think say, the generally popular culture is defined as, like, what's happening now? Maybe what's woke or something? What's uh, happening now to whom? Well... I guess well, maybe our age group might be out of that. Is that, what, is that what we're going? As a fellow, sometimes old curmudgeon, what can I say? I don't listen to hardly any contemporary music either. I glance at these country music award shows sometimes, and I just don't, yeah. I don't see it. I don't get it. But I have been surprised, and this is quite a while back now. This artist might be so old now, I don't know. But uh, my granddaughters turned me on one time to uh, uh, Bruno Mars. Does that name get into no, anybody's no. head? Anyway, I, I was astounded by some of that stuff that I, I really like. Well, you know, you know there's so, Lady Gaga and Pink, and I don't okay, know. Uh, okay. the, I mean, they're incredible singers. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't know if Taylor Swift, a friend of mine, my age, uh, wanted me to go to the to see uh, this Taylor Swift movie, uh, and I said, I don't think so. Because everything I'm seeing on television, I but they're interviewing these teenage girls coming out. But a couple of people my age did go to see it, including this woman I'm talking about, and she said she enjoyed it. But it was twenty dollars for the ticket to get in to see the movie. So this isn't a new way they can make money now. Is yeah. uh, it's just and I I uh, I don't know, I don't begrudge them making money, but yeah. especially if they're selling their concert tickets for like two hundred dollars or something. See, that's the part that I can't understand. You know, in if if I think of a concert, I'm I'm thinking not the way that everybody else does, I'm sure. I'm thinking of a a concert where you're in a building, you know, and somebody's on a stage and they're performing. But these concerts seat thousands of people. Now how in the world can you really hear and see a performer that that's far away from you, and it's all um, like looking at a big movie screen. You know? Which is what you do. Um, it's, you're on, they're yeah, on a jungle. What's the point of being there? Well, they're there, too. The dollars. little tiny things are there, and then there's the big screen, maybe oh. several of them around. The he, and, you know, the answer to that, if I ask certain people, they'll say, it's for the experience. They want to be part of the experience. They want to be in this crowded atmosphere where where everybody's energy is is really high and and they are feeling it so so that's you know so you you you're, you're beyond that that is that is part of the thing yes it's i do remember the, that the, 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 the rolling stones opened their concerts with fireworks and just all kinds of things oh, elvis no. used to open with uh, the theme to 1001 and uh, different people. Do That's what I, yeah, I, I'm not into that at all. I mean, but it's, you know, going back to it, if I saw it, Santana or or whomever. Yeah, that was, the, it was a, a fun, energetic experience. Yes. But no, I'm I'm not with the fireworks and the pyrotechnics and all of that junk that they have. But see, you not can't me. do all of that on the radio. Thank God, huh? You know? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and before uh run out of time, I wanted just a quick shout out or go back to the Surely you were talking about the the old, the golden days and uh, like Fibber McGee and Molly or uh, the Jack Benny. Anyway, I really enjoy when they show, now this is TV, but when they show the old clips of them performing that, I get a real- Standing in front of the radio. And, yeah, and yeah, the reading the script and the different voices. I mean, that was a real talent. 
Yeah. I think. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy watching that, <laughs> them go through the. Yeah. And you could listen to it in your car. Uh, yeah, there you go. If you and had a, if you had a, you know, a cars back in then didn't necessarily have radios in them. We bought a brand new 1950 right. Hudson that didn't have a radio in it really? because my no, father didn't think it was Hudson. worth it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's something kids today is all understand that cars didn't necessarily have heaters or <laughs> radios. <laughs> AC. And uh, electric electric windows were in the limos only. Yeah, you, you know, there'd be an ad in the paper in 1957, da-da-da, radio heater. Yeah. R&H, you would say. Yeah. <laughs> well, remember when cars were, the radios were stolen out of the cars. I mean, those were days when, or were they stealing more than the radio? They were stealing. Well, they were stealing were, were expensive radios. Yeah. Like you, so, probably not the standard radio that came with your Chevy, but it was ones that they paid three or four hundred dollars for. Yeah. This, that's been my experience with yeah. radios being stolen. Back in the days when you were looking for radios to steal out of people. No, 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 no. I was no, looking no, no, for the people okay. who stole the radios. <laughs> I, was, I was on the other side. I thought you had a bit too much hands-on feeling to that, Ray, maybe. No, just I kidding. Know. Well, you know, I really, I really do have such fond memories of the radio, and especially growing up as I did in little tiny towns in Montana and Idaho where, you know, there wasn't, there weren't necessarily any place to go to <laughs> hear music. And maybe the movie theater was showing Dumbo or, or, you know, one of the Disney movies. But I'm very grateful to to what I've learned over the years for, for radio and, and also for having a hands-on experience. I mean, we're sitting here as people who are being recorded, and people can tune in and listen to us jabber away here if they'd like to, you know? And they can even hold up their hand and say, hey, I'd like to come and be part of that, you know? When, when I was so, a little kid listening to Alan Freed, I thought, boy, that's the place to be. I want to be on the radio. You, and made, have you my, finally made it, have right? a, I finally made, made it, it yeah. <laughs> yeah. At some point along the line, I realized, oh, wait a minute, if you're a disc jockey, you have to do supermarket openings, and you have to stand <laughs> outside a car dealership and kill four hours uh, and uh, oh. and and also required some effort to get that job. So well, now, Rick, I have it. to ask: How did you how did you end up coming to KCIW as a volunteer? What spurred you to to become part of this? Okay, a little weird story, but here here it is. Yeah, I was coming back from a medical appointment. I stopped at Crescent City Safeway. I was in line, and the kid, nineteen or twenty year old kid behind, we were just talking a little bit. He goes, "You know what, guy." You've got this great radio voice, man. You do. You ought to do something. And so when I got home, the next I think I, I called and mm. talked to Kelly, and here I am. But why KCIW? I mean, there are other stations around. So. You know, I actually, I don't remember that. Isn't that weird? Well, they, I guess I Googled something in KCIW. Are, are we unique in that we're not canned, so to speak? We don't I think have... this is a, an extremely wonderful place. There's only two radio Station you yeah. volunteer for, but the other station in town is it. It doesn't originate here. They don't have a DJ. They don't have people sitting. They don't anymore. They used to. Well, I don't think so. It, I think it's programmed. You don't hear the name of the artist. You don't hear the name of the song. You, you know, you yeah, don't. You, there's you, nobody. You hear, that, there's too many commercials. They don't have time to talk about the names of anybody or who anybody is. Right? Well, if you ever listen to my shows, I always say who who you just listen to because or who you're about to listen to because it used to really irritate me that somebody would play six or seven songs in a row and then then they'd say, "Well, what you just heard," and then that would be this long litany. Well, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> I wanted to know in the moment who did I just listen to or who am I about to listen to. So anyway, well, that's my particular. I will band. occasionally play through. <laughs> I'll play three or four songs in a row because I can't think of anything to say. So three or four songs, I will think of something to say. That's okay. We are we all do our own thing. <laughs> Another little quick uh, memory of mine went in Sacramento, where I was born and raised at the time. This is the late 50s, I think. We had a station, K-R-O-Y. But the disc jockey was uh, on Del Paso Boulevard, or that was where the radio station was with the window and you could go by and, you know, watch them or I don't know if you can still do that in places. It, I don't think. Yeah, there's there's a place in Fairbanks, or Anchorage, I mean. Well, anyway, it's, it was real exciting. You know, you sit there and you look at the guy, Brian, and I was thinking like you, Ray, wow, I'd love to be in there doing that. 
<laughs> when when I first moved to Brookings and the, the KCIW was kind of gearing up, and I thought, oh my goodness, I could volunteer. Boy, I, I I don't know what I would do. And I had a good friend who also volunteered with me, who was in radio and knows about radio. I didn't know anything about it, so I came here to be basically to be the uh, the handyman or the you know sweep up. Fix things, stuff and like that. And then you rose up and suddenly you were a star. Yes, yes. Oh, and all goodness. of a sudden I saw the light. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I filled out the, the volunteer application. And when so what do you want to do? I put a question mark. <laughs> and then that was ignored entirely because at that time we didn't, well, what we needed was a volunteer that was reading those things to, for people to become volunteers. And we did that. But anyway, and then I, Oh, geez, I'm sure all the all the music shows must be taken up. There isn't certainly would not be any room for me. And what to my surprise, there was actually we had a lot more people then than we do now. And well, then COVID came along, and that sort of put a little crimp in. Well, this our, you know when you volunteer for something, it's easy to say, oh yes, I'll volunteer. Then you find out, oh wait a minute, I have to do something. Yeah, you, well, mean you really want me to be someplace, and yeah. But see, that that is probably what's unique about us uh, because we do this because we want to do it. We're we're not getting paid. I'm at least if you guys are getting paid, you're not sharing with me. But um, <laughs> I don't think no, we're going I, just because you say threatening things like that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Rick, I, it's really wonderful to have people you know tune into the show, maybe on their car radio but by accident or whatever, people who aren't familiar with this community particularly. And then they go, wow, that's that's pretty neat, you know, and, and it's serving a purpose. I mean, I I think that you you have to find some value in it. You have to see that that um there are there are people who enjoy this. I mean, I have friends who tell me that they never miss my two o'clock uh, Sunday show because they really love the Stardust show. And 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 that that pleases me because I know that that music is still getting heard. It's still out there. It's still um, it's still important to a certain swath of people, and and so you know, radio is is doing a great service still. And obviously, it it's not going away. You know, and the more and more television personalities who have a lot to say. Are, are doing podcasts. And so that's more and more um, radio being used for propaganda or for news or, or whatever. So it's here to stay, I'm happy to say. And if you want to join in on the fun, or if you're listening to some of the things on KCIW and saying, boy, that's really bad. I could certainly do better than that. Yeah, come on then you Yeah, just come on out and, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give you the chance to do that. We have all kinds of things you can volunteer for. KCIW.org, click on the appropriate click on thing, and before you know it, and there the, the other day, the other day, this uh, this actually happened. I was out with a with a lady, and we walked into the to the brewery uh, to watch a show, and there was immediate applause, and, I, and we both looked at each other, said, "See, it's about time we're recognized," <laughs> but I didn't. Realize that somebody just finished the song. And oh, we, and it was, oh, Ray, <laughs> you're not getting what you deserve. No, but I have been pointed out from the stage by Would you by like entertainers. us to applaud you right now? Would that be helpful? No, no. Okay. <laughs> so if I have to ask for it, it's not worth it. <laughs> anyway, again, we're coming down to do the last it. seconds here. We have 20, 19. Okay. And so. <laughs> My name is Ray Gary. Thanks for listening. If you think you can do a better job, kcrw.org, click on volunteers. And I, plenty of people here to help. Yes. To get you through it. And we get to meet new people. Yep. And so I'm very happy to know you. Signing off, I guess, here. We're we're done. We're We're done. We're done. Okay. Okay. Adios.